the demons call when they do what they do And now I feel like taking off, find a place with a view Hi, my name is Minia Perez Pablo. The title of our film is Life to Survive. During the COVID-19 shutdown, I saw my family struggling with access to resources, and it's very complicated when family members have no access to benefits from the government. This challenge motivated me to learn and actually work on the injustice with my Mayan Nam community. I thank from my heart, Maricela Martinez, Nazario Briosio, Nelson Ramirez, and our special interview Dani Diaz for helping me out with co-producing this film and all of their hard work on this production. I hope that everyone can understand and see the reality that low-income indigenous families face. I also hope that we can motivate, and motivate ourselves and others to collaborate together to overcome this challenge. We are now living to survive, but we need to thrive. Then ban me. And then, then I shall get to be here. And then, then I'm to be here. Then I'm going to be here. Then I'm going to be here. El coronavirus ha impactado a todo el mundo, pero específicamente a las personas indígenas en Oakland, California. ¿Por qué? Por falta de recursos económicos, trabajos, ya que ellos tuvieron que salir a trabajar durante la pandemia. Las personas indígenas indocumentadas necesitan de mucha ayuda financiera y económica. La pandemia para mí y para mi familia está y más que en primer lugar mi papá se quedó sin trabajo, mis hermanas y nadie estaba trabajando y más que en mi familia todos salieron positivo al COVID entonces y más que las clases pasaron en línea y pues fue muy difícil para nosotros yo y mi hermana y mi sobrinita están en la escuela y pues cuando fue en línea teníamos que compartir el wifi a veces uno de nosotros nos quedamos sin señal o sin poder entrar en las clases porque no teníamos señal. A veces un día no hay señal y a veces sí hay. Que la comida nos quedamos sin comida. Gracias a la escuela Fremont que dio comida. Nos dando comida allá por el Coliseo. Entonces nosotros aprovechamos la oportunidad de ir. Y más que a nosotros nos llegó tarjetas para ir a comprar comida. Entonces, así nos Los meses después, a mi papá a veces dos días o tres días a la semana él trabajó y entonces así podíamos comer. Yo sentí que ya no podía más porque más que estaba muy aburrido en la casa, éramos mucho, me estaba como dando dolor de cabeza y más que con mis sobrinitos y sobrinitas y pues más que molestaba mucho entonces así ya no podía más um, mucho mejor así podemos aprender más en persona que en línea fue muy difícil In addition, a lot of these families of low income have scarcity on finding programs that do not require a social secure number. Here in Oakland, many of these programs do require certain proofs and the social security number is a big part of those requirements. One of the findings have for resources is the Radio Balam. Radio Balam is focused on helping the Mayumam community. They provide easy access to these resources by contacting the community on their Facebook account.
they do lives and translation in the Mayan Mam language so our families can have a better understanding of the resources that the ready has available for them. We really encourage everyone to be supportive. This COVID-19 is a big challenge and it has been increasing and impacting the lowest indigenous community. My name is Jesus Morales, I am a senior at Fremont High School and I'm a director of this documentary. I chose this topic because of how people underestimate the harm of global warming and how it negatively affects the world around us. I would like to thank my production team, Javon, Liz, Maverick, and Jeremiah for helping me with the edits, music, and getting the footage for the documentary. I would also like to thank them for showing that they care about this documentary. I want people to learn about my documentary is that the youth care about this world too and that we're trying to make a difference. I hope you enjoy. What do you know about global warming? I feel like I know a good amount. I know that global warming is real. Global warming has a major impact on people. It affects our health, our environment, and our civilization. It looks like you lost another one. Many forms of air pollution has taken over, but the main one is made by us. Like how temperatures are changing um, due to like the greenhouse effect and more carbon emissions. And I've like learned a lot about the effects of climate change, like what can happen to um, basically our planet. Like there's just like so many different effects. Like as well as uh, the whole natural world. And uh, at this point, it's affecting uh, people who have like low income the most, uh, and countries that are in uh, more. 1,011 people for only two per thousand people have asthma in Oakland and in Alameda County. Health and jobs are at risk. Heart and lung disease, heat stroke, and bacterial infections are a few of the health consequences associated with climate change. Low-income populations typically have less access to information, resources, institutions, and other factors to prepare. Low-income countries, countries that were formerly colonized, uh, are being less affected, and uh, then also just depends on where they're located. So, like certain countries that are vulnerable to like hurricanes or to droughts. to the heat wave that hit the Pacific Northwest, killing more than 200 and devastating the coastline with hundreds of millions of mussels literally cooked alive. An event so extreme, scientists now say it would have been virtually impossible without human-caused climate change. Severe heat is drying out the West, with reservoirs reaching new lows. The parched conditions now fueling infernos across the region, making the fires bigger and more destructive. I don't know if it can't be solved, to be honest, um, but what could probably help slow it down is if everyone did their part. And so if we try to do more of the spare the air days, right, where you're not driving your car as much, but you are partnering out with someone to carpool or riding a bike or walking to work or making a few of those days off, you know, recycling. So making sure that our landfill goes where it's supposed to go and not in the ocean or where it can harm some of the species that we need to um, put in their natural habitats to be able to procreate and then keep their evolution going. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. I'm sorry that these kids don't know how to act themselves. <laughs> so. like, there are things that we as like 
the common folk can do um, in terms of just decreasing our own carbon footprint, but I feel like a lot of larger scale companies and corporations need to do a lot more efforts into kind of also kind of decreasing their own carbon footprint as a company um, because while we can only do so much, a lot of what is releasing greenhouse gases is coming from larger corporations and their own practices and how um, they conduct their own businesses. Oakland, California, the city of culture and diversity, but also Oakland has its issues like crime and drugs, but mainly its homelessness issue. Here you will see an interview of Fatima Salahuddin. Main cause is capitalism, right? <laughs> you have an unequal distribution of wealth in this country that has been, I mean, historically has been the foundation of how this country has been built. So if there were more of, and it's very radical to think of a society that we call like socialists, where everybody kind of, where there's not this one group of people who have all this money and then the majority of us are just kind of left with the scraps. But I think we need to like not have a capitalist kind of economy and I think that would really help redistribute the wealth. I also think the cause of homelessness is um, lack of access to education because education I feel like truly liberates people who are marginalized, who grow up in low-income communities to give them the opportunity to be more economically empowered and, and learning new skills and building skills so that they could have something to offer to, to our, you know, to the job market, right? And be like a candidate who is, to be somebody who just can have those opportunities. So, if that makes sense. I mean, my entire life, I, I grew up in San Francisco, you know, and I think the population there is, is just as bad or even worse in some ways in Oakland because of the way more, like visually you can see how the wealth is unequally distributed in San Francisco. Um, man, I, you know, when I'm little, I, I used to think all the time and ask my mom, you know, like, oh man, like, I don't know, just this desire to want to help people and like suffering was something I really, um, I don't know, I just was very sensitive and emotional as a kid and like seeing people suffering like really got to me. And so my mom really modeled for me um, kindness through, she always helped out. She never really gave money, but she was always like, give food, you know, you never know what people's situations are. But I mean, I've had some positive ones and I've had some really negative ones where someone's like, I don't eat Chinese food, I want a Subway sandwich, right? <laughs> so I don't know, but I think there needs to be a little bit more understanding and a holistic approach because a lot of those people do like suffer from mental health and like drug issues to do. As of January 2020, California had an estimated 100,000 people that were homeless. Of those homeless people, 8,000 were families, 11,000 were veterans, and 12,000 were teenagers. Public school data reported that during the 2018 and 2019 school year, an estimated amount of 200,000 children experienced homelessness that year. Of that total, 11,000 students were not sheltered. 90,000 were sheltered and 200,000 were doubled up together. But in two years since California's humanitarian catastrophe has worsened, college students are living in debt and are resorting to living in their cars. People are living in city-sanctioned encampments that have up to 70 tents enclosed, etc. In March of 2020, some advocates for unhoused people thought they might be forced to solve the homeless crisis. Some officials hope to provide stable and private shelter and housing. 
There are more elderly residents becoming homeless, and there are, are a lot more encampments surfacing. How can we address the crisis in Oakland? One way is to support a universal basic income. Where do we start? The Oakland Guaranteed Income Pilot. Right now, there are 600 spots filled. How can we increase the funding to reach more families? My name is Carlos Hernandez. The name of this film is Climate Change. Climate change refers to long term shifts in temperature and weather patterns. It's important to keep climate change at a low rate because with this being a problem all around the world, people don't have accessibility to clean water. I would like to encourage everyone to be more eco friendly and respectful more. Climate change threatens. Um our ability to continue to live as a species on this planet. We are releasing a number of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and methane. A lot of changes in uh, climate patterns, in weather, in polar ice caps, in sea level rise. Between 2030 and 2050, climate change is expected to cause approximately 250,000 additional deaths per year. Not only that, but some animals are at risk. If we don't make a change now, there will be a lot of deaths piling up, so please get up and make a change. My name is Joey Notaro. If we don't start making changes like yesterday, um, we really put ourselves in danger of not being able to survive through the next century of a lot of people who are going to unfortunately be refugees in low-lying countries and island countries, um, in coastal cities, uh, in places that are already dry and turning into deserts. Like we're going to really destabilize our ability to survive if we don't make a change soon humans, we're experiencing more extreme weather events, so more intense and more frequent hurricanes, um, tsunamis, droughts like we are experiencing right now in the state of California. Human beings, for many of us, that means like if we live close to the ocean or we live in drier areas already, we are putting ourselves in greater danger of not being able to live there for the long term. Uh, for animals, uh, it depends. I would say in many cases the changing temperature for like land animals is causing a lot of terrestrial land animals to migrate to further northern territories where it's getting warmer. Um, so it's changing where they can live and if they can live in their former environments, their former habitats. And for ocean animals it's actually way more devastating because the rising temperature of the ocean, it has a whole bunch of effects like increasing acidification in the ocean. So our oceans are more acidic than they used to be, which is really dangerous for a lot of animal life, especially um, corals and coral reefs that are dying off in numbers that we haven't seen ever before in our, in our history, in our existence. Our, our species, if humanity survives, um, we may be looking at hundreds of millions of years before life bounces back to evolve into all of the species that we drive extinct that do all sorts of things that allow us to continue to survive on this planet. Recycling helps with climate change by helping us clean the environment. Plus, some items that get recycled can be reused and made into something new. Trees and plants help with climate change by being able to absorb the carbon dioxide and providing us with oxygen.
what do you think are the solutions to uh, climate change? Well, I'm not a scientist, so I'm not really sure. I hear things. I'm not sure if they you should believe them or not. Whatever they find out, I'm down for it. I support it if it's gonna help, you know, sustain the earth. Probably just treating the earth a lot better than what we are currently treating it. So trying to actively do our part and not polluting the air, polluting the sea, right? Not actively trying to um, make some of the animals go extinct. Yes. Um, in extinct, excuse me, the way uh, that we have been doing and just treating the earth a lot better. Number one, stop pollution. Um, and try to recycle more. Trying to find ways to reduce as much as possible our carbon footprint for transportation. So if that means like trying to find a way to live closer to where you work, to take public transit, to walk, to bike, any way that is reducing as much as possible, having to use cars, um, if you are the only person using them, or even if you carpool, it would be better than just being one person in a car. Make a lot of our energy more efficient and then change the energy source for a lot of these products. Um, I think it would go a long way to the cutting emissions for greenhouse gases.